What's going on YouTube? This is Roger here from the Clan Reef, and I'm home for Christmas. Um, <laughs> where do I start? So, I guess I'm going to kind of give you a nice brief synopsis of my weekend and Monday and today. So, came home Saturday night and woke up Sunday morning and moved the sump to the basement. And we'll get into that in a little bit. That's the purpose of this video, but I just want to give you a little timeline. I'm going to make probably separate videos, but I'm going to give you a nice little introduction to my weekend. Um, so I moved this up to the basement, which is an all-day project, because, um, I don't know, I, I had to clean out the old sump, clean all the equipment, run plumbing, drill holes, well, my dad and I drilled holes, re-ran wires, re-ran, you know, plumbing, all this stuff, um, we moved the apex, we moved pretty much everything except the display to the basement. And I'll show you that. It's, it's a messy setup right now. We're going to get some cable management stuff here pretty soon. But um, for the most part, it's functional for right now. And that's what we needed. We needed it to be functional because I, I took the sump offline for 24 hours and my alkalinity dropped like 1.0. So I just needed to get it back up and running because uh, I wasn't dosing straight to the tank because the doser vessels needed to be cleaned and recalibrated. And it was just, it was just a very long day on s Sunday. So Monday rolls around and I, I, I busted out my, my 105 lens to take pictures and I, I noticed that, you know, well I didn't actually notice, a couple people on Nano Reef noticed that a couple of my corals have flatworms on them. I noticed, so m mainly, so okay, on the elegance I noticed these little pink spots. I was like, that's not right. So I took it out, dipped it, these flatworms came off. So I went around, I checked all my LPS, I found them on my elegance, my uh, flower pot, uh, my all my sh mushrooms, even my two Iron Mans which are hidden and I'm kind of upset that I can't get them out. Um, they're on there and then one of my other mushrooms actually just like completely killed itself and it, w it went from the size of a, like a silver dollar to nothing um, and I can't even find it now. Um, and then it was on my frog spawn, not my frog spawn, my hammer and my torch. So those were the, the corals that I saw, the polyclad flatworms, and I'll talk about these flatworm disaster in a little bit. But then I know I posted a picture of some of my Acropora, and people noticed, oh, those look like Acropora eating flatworm bites. So I went in and I inspected all of my SPS and found Acropora eating flatworms on two of my SPS colonies. Luckily, it's on this rock over here, this one right here, and I did not find any over here. I'm, that's not to say that they're not over there, I just haven't seen any signs of them. Um, regardless, I took that, I took everything out and dipped as what I could. Um, dipped whole rocks, I dipped frags, I dipped everything, and I remounted everything, and it was quite a disaster. But I, I I'll, I'll get into that later. But more updates um, <laughs> to kind of see that. I got uh, a little yellow coarse rats, you can see him kind of swimming down there right above the elegance. He's, you know, kind of hanging over there on the right side. Um, to hopefully, with some, you know, pest control, some you know, red bug control, flatworm control. Um, they're known pest eaters. I've tried to get a melanaris rats, nobody around here has them. Um, down the road, I might swap it out because melanaris rats are renowned pest eaters. Like, coarse rats are hit or miss, but I feel like. If I didn't get one, it would have been a disaster, and who knows, this one could be a hit and it could wipe out all my flatworms. So I got one of those, and I also got a diamond goby for the sand. The sand's looking pretty crappy right now because we accidentally dropped a bag of carbon in the sump, and it kind of got sucked into the display tank. So I'm going to have a nice fun time getting all the carbon out of the tank. Um, um, what, what else is new? Um, all those frags up here were for sale, and now they're not because... No one wants, I'm not going to give corals away from a tank that's infested with flatworms. So I have a whole bunch of frags. <laughs> um, what else is here? Oh, my clownfish are now breeding. Um, I have a little video clip. Actually, I think I just reformatted the card to make room for it. Regardless, I'll take a little video of the male clownfish tending to the eggs. It was kind of cool watching it. Um, I probably have nine or ten anemones up there on that that right rock there and there's one behind the left structure and there's one dead center behind that middle structure um, which is bad because that's where all my favorite SPS are my Aura Valida and my um, Catropora are right there um, 
but yeah, well, <laughs> it's kind of a long day, I'll, I will admit. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm just, just so exhausted and stressed because this tank was so, it was like prime in November and then I come home and then little did I know, come came home, <laughs> it's a quite a disaster. But everything's doing okay. I'm not seeing any reduced polyp extension on anything. Um, aside from those two corals that had the acropori and flatworm bites, um, I have an entire bucket right out right out of frame here, covered filled with flatworms. I I I dipped that hammer coral, which I'm assuming is the source or something over there, that one of those rocks or something, because uh, thousands of them came off in that dip. And I'll I'll, I'll kind of talk about that process here in a little bit. Uh, if I can find something to dip. Um, I'll, make, I'll make a little tutorial or something. I should have done it, but there's people in the house and it was loud and the dogs are barking, so I didn't make a tutorial. Um, but I'm going to go through that with you um, in a later video this weekend. But I just wanted to give you a little update. Um, but for right now, I'm going to take you downstairs. I'm going to show you the sump, what we did in the sump. and uh, So I'll be right back, guys. So here's the sump. Um, if this kind of is an awkward angle, I'm using a 40 millimeter lens, so I kind of have to stay a little bit farther back. But um, here's the sump. I can kind of move up a little bit. Um, I, this is the old sump from my 60 gallon frag tank. It's 36 by 18 by 20, I think. So it's a pretty big sump, probably 20 gallons. Um, the way we plumbed it is we have this gray tubing. Um, oh my god, where's my finger? This gray tubing is actually attached to the drain line up to the tank and then attaches to this PVC and then right down and it's right goes right into a filter stock. Um, there's no valves or anything on it because with you know 10 feet of head pressure, this pump can't pump more than that drain can handle, so I'm pretty good there. Um, I got my big INS 80. I've been I love this skimmer. I freaking love it. This I feel like it was built for this sump because we put it in here and it was it was skimming so much better than it was in my other sump. Also I have two Eheim Jaegers in the back and a big Corellia 700 to keep kind of stuff moving. And I have a bag of carbon here. It's there's kind of a glare, um, but that's what fell in the sump and opened up and kind of got sucked in. Um, I'm using my big return pump from the old frag tank as well. All I do, all I have is a union ball valve in case I need to take the pump off. Um, I we've turned the sump we've turned return we've turned the return pump off multiple times and let it just drain. Um, it won't fill up the sump. There's not enough water in the t like the top couple inches of the tank and the tubing to overflow the sump. There's so there's no valves or anything or ball valves, which kind of makes me nervous, but. Oh, I mean, we tested it and tested it and tested it and never overflowed, never leaked, or like, eh, whatever. I don't. We can always add them down the road, but and it's not really that big of a deal for us right now. I'm still using my GHL it's up top next to the router, which is going to move and go away. Um, my vessels are over there on the right. Currently, I'm dosing, I think, 64 milliliters of calcium alkalinity and then 60 or 50 milliliters of magnesium. And the, but the, um, calcium alkalinity is daily, and then magnesium is weekly, bi-weekly. Um, but I, my camera's about to die, so I just have my mop apex mounted to the wall, and we're going to get some cable management for right here. Um, and everything, the two cables up there, those are the cables for the lights. Um, they plug in right here, so they actually run through the floor as well, because the apex is down here. Um, so yeah, I think... I think that's all I really got for down here since my camera's about to die. I'll kind of give you a full shot here. I'm going to get nice and focused. There's some, a messy desk over there. But that, this is the, the new sump. Um, you guys enjoyed the video. I have a couple of more videos coming out this weekend. But um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're having a better tank miss than I am. So um, enjoy your tanks, guys, because a disaster is inevitable eventually um, if you're in the hobby long enough. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or recommendations, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll see you guys later.